Hello everyone. I'm Tomo Tadokoro from Central Research Institute of Electric Power Industry. In this video, I would like to introduce you how to use x t a p by simulating an RLC series circuit as an example. x t a p is a program for the analysis of electromagnetic transients in power systems. It is available to everyone for free of charge. It can be downloaded from the website at www.xtap.org. And in previous videos, you can watch introduction to XTAP and how to install XTAP. So, in this video, to simulate an RLC series circuit, go through three main steps as follows. Step 1 is creating an RLC series circuit and adding some measurements on it. Step 2 is setting simulation conditions and running a simulation. Step 3 is waveform plotting of simulation result. From now on, I will show how to use x t a p by recording my PC screen. First step, launch the x t a p and create a new circuit diagram. It is automatically named as new circuit1.xsf. Wait a moment while I adjust the screen. And now, we can start to place components. Basic electrical circuit components and control system block components are available in the component category window on the left. I will drag a ground, a resistor, an inductor, a capacitor, and a DC voltage source one by one onto the canvas. If a ground is connected to a node, its voltage is 2-0. The components used in this simulation are only a small portion of those provided by x t a p x t a p has various models, such as transformers, HVDC and fax converters, photovoltaic power generations, and so on. A voltage probe and a current probe Labeled XPAT output are also used to measure the capacitor voltage and the current through the circuit. This completes the component selection. Then, set each component property. A double click on a component displays the properties screen for that component. I would like to see u n d e r d a m p e d response of the RLC circuit as an example. So, the resistance is 10 ohms, the inductance is 5 millihenries, the capacitance is 5 microfarads, and amplitude of DC voltage source is 10 volts. After setting properties, arrange circuit and connect each component with wires. Arrange in the order of the current probe, the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor from the DC voltage source. A component can be rotated by pressing the R key. You can make a wire by clicking on a terminal, which is shown as red squares, and connect the wire with double click on another terminal. Once the beginning terminal and the end terminal are connected, 
their red squares disappear. Creating the circuit is now complete. For illustration purpose, I use the probes to measure the voltage and the current in this circuit. There is another way to measure without probes. In this way, select the recording tab and check items to generate outputs in the properties screen of a component. I return the voltage probe by pressing undo key few times. Before going to the second step, I will save the created circuit as rlccircuit.xsf. The second step describes the setting simulation conditions and running the simulation. Conditions must be set to perform simulations. To do this, select Simulation Setup in the toolbar. In the Simulation Setup screen, I set the time step size to 20 microseconds and the calculation end time to 5 milliseconds here, for example. This is because the resonant frequency is 1 kHz and the underdamped response lasts a few milliseconds. All other settings remain as default. Click the OK button in the screen. After closing the simulation setup screen, the circuit must be saved to before running the simulation. Then, run the simulation by clicking on the Analyze button in the toolbar. The command terminal is displayed when the simulation is being executed. After that, when the simulation ends normally, the message Simulation Finished appears. We have now finished the simulation. Now. Let's check the directory XTAP is working in. This XSF file stands for the XTAP schematic file, which is stored the circuit diagram as explained earlier. After the simulation, XTAP makes some files. This XPF file means XTAP plot file and stores the simulation results. They can be used to the waveform plotting program XPLT. This XTF file is text format input data that is generated from XSF file. Dot out files are also text file and contain errors and warning messages. In the third step, it's the last step. I would like to introduce the waveform plotting program XPLT. You can launch it by clicking on the Start XPLT button in the toolbar. When XPLT starts, a result file, XPF file, is selected. If the simulation was executed before starting XPLT, Otherwise, what to select a different result file, what to add files, click add file and select the desired file from the open file window. In this time, the simulation was executed before starting XPLT, so the XPF file is selected as the RLC circuit. To plot waveforms, first Click the Add Graph button to add a graph area. Then select the branch currents and the currents labeled iProbe1. And click the Plot It button to display it. Now 
we can show the current waveform through the circuit. In the case of plotting the capacitor voltage, click the add graph button to add second graph area. Then selecting the node voltage differences and selecting the voltage labeled VPROV1. And click the plot it button to display it. I recolor the voltage waveform from blue to red. As shown in graphs, you can see the underdamped response and the capacitor voltage becomes equal to integral of the current over time, divided the capacitance. In the last topic, I would like to introduce a changing graph size tool and how to get numerical data. The changing graph size tool works by clicking on the changing entire graph size button. As the name says, you can adjust the graph size. To get the numerical data, right clicking away from a waveform but still in the graph area and selecting the display numerical data. The numerical data are displayed in tab-separated format text file. It can be opened by Microsoft Excel or a similar spreadsheet software. That's all. In this video, I introduced the fundamental usage of XTAP by simulating the RLC series circuit. We would appreciate if you could download and use XTAP. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope to see you again in the future. Bye bye.